Saturday morning. At least that's what it is right now for me. October 15th, 2022. Almost done with 2 Corinthians. We're going to finish tomorrow. Um, today is chapter 11. And Paul is still kind of defending himself. And he's explaining all of his trials and tribulations and the fact that he's not taking up any collections or payment for coming back to preach or give this message to the church in Corinth. And I'm like, why is he doing this? Why is he defending himself so rigorously? And he is, so I titled today, What Love Does. So yesterday was Love Speaks for Itself. Love doesn't really need defending. But he's explaining and he's telling about all of this because that's what he was compelled to do by love. And he's talking about how deeply he loves these people and I think there's a level of you know when we go back to his first letter to the same church he talked a lot about in practical terms what it means to sort of have a clear conscience and so I think that's part of what he's threading back through here like he's showing us what that means to sort of live it out walk it out he could not have a clear conscience with this church because they, you know, there must have been some evidence that many or all of them got the message of grace and love. But like many of us, and I feel like I'm actually in this um, spot right now, so I'm a little out of breath. It's a, one of those slow, steep, <laughs> but very steep hills. Um, it's one of those decept deceptive ones. So anyway, so I've been walking uphill for a while. Look at that, pretty colors. So it, it, he, he really does love. Like he is experiencing the true love and grace and faith and hope and all of that which what love does to the heart and love wants itself to be spread about for everybody to get it and live it and understand it and have the natural fruits of it that's just naturally what love does within the heart but with humans it starts off kind of getting it here but then we've literally got to walk it out before we truly get it. And I th this church was in that early walking stage. Like think of a toddler, how wobbly they can be. And, you know, they need somebody there to sort of help them from crashing. Or they can even be easily led off by a counterfeit. And that is what has happened People that maybe are a little bit power hungry, prideful, are seeing an opportunity and they're swooping in and they're like, ooh, we could capitalize on a large body of believers like this. And yeah, so they were in a very vulnerable, vulnerable position of their belief of love and receiving that message where it could easily come in and be corrupted, manipulated, twisted. Um, and in subtle ways that they might not even know. And we're still vulnerable to that today. I'm vulnerable to that right now. I've got to be, really be careful. <clears throat> I think about my, another analogy that came to me was um, when I was a young adult. And my parents were pretty good. Actually, I lived with my grandparents <clears throat> the last two years of my high school career. And... They were pretty good about giving me freedom, but my own conscience, I was downloaded to earth with, with a strong people-pleasing 
Like, so that's what kept me in line was, I don't want to make anybody mad. I'll like do what they expect. And so even though I had freedom, I didn't give myself as much freedom as maybe some other people did. I kept myself in line by trying to belong, meet people's expectation, get the pats on the head, the add a good girl, you know, that kind of, you know, that love and belonging in my family. Um, I was not the rebellious one. And I went to college and all of a sudden there was none of that. I didn't have those kind of authority figures in my conscience then like trying to meet their expectations. And instead I was with hey, let's go to the bar, the party, stay out till 5 a.m. And now I was faced, my people-pleasing ways were, were now faced with this temptation. It was like, well, and I need to belong wherever I am. <laughs> I didn't belong to myself yet. I've belonged to the world totally my whole life. I'm just now starting to realize my own <laughs> significance and that I matter and bringing all that back. And what does it mean to belong to Felicia? and to God. And what does all of that mean? Um, but I went off the rails in college because now I was like, well, in my conscience then and to be liked and keeping up with everybody, I exhausted myself and landed myself in the hospital for a few days, literally exhausted and got anemic. And anyway, it was a mess. <laughs> so I quickly learned, okay, you got to rein it in a little bit, but I was still very much living according to wherever I was at the time. And that's been my, even into my adult um, <clears throat> lives. So I think that's part of what's happening, you know, even in, that's probably an oversimplified analogy, but you know, you're in a vulnerable spot when you want to belong to other humans we are vulnerable when we're in that position. And even though we're like, okay, this message that God loves me unconditionally, no matter what, that sounds great, but I don't know, like we don't know how to walk that out yet. We can be very vulnerable, but Paul's got it. And he wants other people to get it so bad that he's willing to put himself in danger, go get money from other sources, not take money from them so that his message is not adulterated or compromised in their minds by that. Um, so he is really working hard in his full understanding of God's love and grace and then he's, so that's what love does. It's willing, it wants itself to be known by other people. So it will sacrifice, be good, you know, all those things, patient, kind, in order to promote itself, which means the person itself needs to humble. The, the person that is carrying this powerful message will kind of naturally submit, sacrifice, um, become humble, weak, you know, all the things that Paul mentions in this part of the letter. He's, he's walked it out. He's living it. He's able to live it and kind of gladly. The people in Corinth are not there yet. And any believer, when you start to get the message of grace, I think you need to be surrounded by other people who are you know, have strong legs and that know, that really know and get it. Um, otherwise, we are also vulnerable to a lot of other false and counterfeit messages. Because freedom, just for the young adult that goes out on their own, is intoxicating. And it can really go in some wrong directions that are not good, that are not loving. And... Um, this is one of those things we can't, I don't think we can know. Well, most of things we can't know until we walk it out. That's, that is the way God designed it. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. We can't think our way into love. We can't think our way into the fruits and being that we try, we try, I tried. And when you finally, it's like, you know, that you have that V8 moment, um, then you're like, oh, 
and then you've got to on your own and your wobbly legs and your feet like start to learn it and and get it in your mind it's a reverse process so but Paul in his understanding of it in order to have a clear conscience is going hard after these people doing whatever it takes to let the message of love penetrate their hearts so that it can ripple out and go out from there so hey hey anyway so that is the that is what i got out of today that second corinthians chapter 11 and we'll finish up with 12 and 13 tomorrow and then be off to galatians i think anywho I hope you have a great weekend or whatever day and time of the year it is for you as you're watching. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. Rise and shine. I'm going to work on strengthening my love legs, <laughs> uh, love in action, so that my mind can eventually get it. All right. Talk to you later. Rise and shine. <laughs>